How you doing? I'm Whimsery, and today we're going to be watching Fight Club. Why? Because it is number 12 on our list of 250 greatest movies of all time, and also because I've been told it's really good, and I think it's time for an action movie, finally. We've been doing a lot of scary movies, and I'm ready for some action. I'm pretty sure it's an action movie. Um, I mean, what else is it going to be with a name like that, right? Being so high on the list, I know it's gonna be good, so, um, yeah, let's watch the movie. Oh, and by the way, I guess I was wrong. It says it's a drama slash comedy, so, uh, it's not an action movie, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. I wonder if it's a fun club. Okay. Um, it's got some famous people in it. Meet me. Ew! Jared Leto! Very intense. Music. People are always asking me if I know oh. Tyler Durden. This is it. Would you like to say a few words to mark the occasion? We can't think of anything. I wonder how clean that gun is. <laughs> that old saying, how you always hurt the one you love, it works both ways. Project Mayhem wrapped the foundation columns of a dozen buildings with blasting gel. A few square blocks will be reduced to smoldering rubble. I know this because Tyler knows this. All of this has got something to do with a girl named Marla Singer. Bob. This was a support group for men with testicular cancer. That was Bob. We're still men. You cry now. No. With insomnia, nothing's real. Like so many others, I had become a slave. Johanna Shav's sofa with the string green stripe pattern. What kind of dining set defines me as a person? I had it all. You can't die from insomnia. And not off, I wake up in strange places. You need healthy, natural sleep. Get more exercise. Nice. Super helpful. I'm in pain. You want to see pain? See the guys with testicular cancer. <laughs> That's pain. <laughs> she we give each other strength. I know it's supposed to be funny, but that would be so sad. My name is Bob. Bob. Bob had been a champion bodybuilder. And now I'm bankrupt. Oh. I'm divorced. <sighs> my two grown kids won't even return my phone calls. Strangers with this kind of honesty make me go a big rubbery one. He's trauma dumping on you. You can cry. You gotta do it. Something happened. <laughs> I let go. Losing all hope was freedom. <laughs> Babies don't sleep this well. Ah, you did it! Oh gosh. Oh, he's going to... Ugh. Didn't say anything? People always assume the worst. <laughs> I bet. Into your cave. I like your cave. You're going to find your power animal. <laughs> nice. Slide. Every evening I was born again. Oh my gosh. That's so strange. This was my vacation, and she ruined everything. This is cancer, right? This chick <laughs> did not have testicular cancer. <laughs> she had no diseases at all. <laughs> He's so upset. The big tourist. You're doing the same thing. I couldn't sleep. Dang it, Marla. Go find your own group. When you have insomnia, you're never really asleep and you're never really awake. It sucks. Four days, though. I no longer have any fear of death. No one will have sex with me. I just... <laughs> you're standing at the entrance of your cave. The cave again. If I did have a tumor, I'd name it Marla. <laughs> He's such a hypocrite. Sly. Uh, she replaced the penguin. <laughs> oh, she looks interesting. We need to talk. Don't touch people. I'm on to you. What? You're not dying the way Chloe back there is dying. So? <laughs> so? I'll expose you. Go ahead. I'll expose you. <laughs> it's cheaper than a movie and this free coffee. Why do you do it? When people think you're dying, man, they really, really listen to you. Instead of just waiting for their turn to speak. Share yourself. Completely. I need this. Just go at different times. We're gonna split up the week. <laughs> you take tuberculosis. My smoking doesn't go over at all. Testicular cancer should be no contest. I have more of a right to be there than you. You still have your balls. Take both the parasites. Now we both have three. How many do you go to? Selling those? Yes, I'm selling some clothes. I want a sending bowel cancer. <laughs> this is so... Look, we're gonna split it, okay? It's fair. Deal. It's a good idea, guys. Looks like this is goodbye. Well, let's not make a big thing out of it. How's this for not making a big thing? 
Maybe, maybe we should exchange numbers. Ma'am. Okay. Marla! This is how I met Marla Singer. Y'all are both crazy. Who are you? Cornelius? Rupert? Travis? If you wake up at a different time, would you wake up as a different person? Sample packaged mouthwash, tiny bars of soap. The people I meet on each flight, they're single serving friends. <laughs> Here's where the infant went through the windshield. The teenager's braces are wrapped around the backseat ashtray. Oh my. Might make a good anti smoking ad. <sighs> Uh, modern art. <laughs> Take the X. There's less than the cost of a recall. We don't do one. Which car company do you work for? <laughs> a major one. <laughs> you're not going to tell her. Want to switch seats? What do you do? Why? So you can pretend like you're interested. <laughs> oh, I want to know too. You have a kind of sick desperation in your life. <laughs> Whoa. You shouldn't tell people that. Sorry. I make and I sew soap. And this is how I met. Tyler Durden. <laughs> One can make all kinds of explosives using simple household items. Yeah, I'd want a different seat. Tyler, you are by far the most interesting single-serving friend I've ever met. Devastating. Everything on a plane is single-serving, even the... Oh, I get it. It's very clever. How's that working out for you? He's kind of rude. Do I give you the ass or the crutch? <laughs> Airlines have this policy about vibrating luggage. When a suitcase vibrates, and the door's got to call the police. Every once in a while. It's a dildo. <laughs> We have to use the indefinite article, a dildo, never your dildo. <laughs> That's good. That's very smart. Oh man, he's rich. Never mind. <laughs> ah. You can't go into the unit police orders. Oh wow. It's the worst day ever. Do you have somebody you can call? Oh, that's the only one you have? It's the only number you have? Yeah. If you ask me now, I couldn't tell you why I called him. Oh, oh, the soap guy. <laughs> the car thief. Mr. Spiky Hair. Crotch guy. Oh. I don't think they're supposed to ring back. <laughs> That'd be so scary. I wouldn't answer. Tyler? Who is this? The clever guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I never pick up my phone. So what's up? Uh, He's just... <laughs> what are you eating? I'm curious. It could be worse. A woman could cut off your penis while you're sleeping, toss it out the window of a moving car. There's always that. There's always that. A wardrobe that was getting very respectable. Oh, all his stuff. All his furniture. <sighs> Shit, man, now it's all gone. It's so sad. His nice things. We are byproducts of a lifestyle obsession. Fuck Martha Stewart. <laughs> things you own end up owning you. We should find a hotel. Oh. Just ask, man. Oh, oh, hey, hey, no, no, no. Yes, you I, did. I didn't mean... Cut the foreplay and just ask. <laughs> foreplay? Can I stay at your place? That's... Yeah. <laughs> that was easy. That's a hard thing to ask someone, though, that you just met. It's hard to ask anyone. I want you to hit me as hard as you can. What? I want you to hit me as hard as you can. While the rest of us were sleeping, he worked. Why would anyone want this shit job? It affords him other interesting opportunities. Like some single frames of pornography in the family film? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nobody knows that they saw it, but they did. Like Disney. Sometimes as a banquet waiter at the luxurious Pressman Hotel. Do not watch. I cannot go when you watch. You farted on meringue, you used on braised on deep, and asked for the cream of mushroom soup. You get the idea. <laughs> why? Why? I don't know why. Never been to fight you. No. I don't want to die without any scars. Hey, I don't know about that. Oh, this. no. <laughs> What, like in the face? <laughs> in the face. Are you gonna do it? Don't do it. Oh. Ah. Hit me in the ear. Well, you should have said no ears. <laughs> oh, that wasn't part of the deal. Rude. Y'all look crazy right now. Would you do that? Would you hit him? Someone told you to hit him? We should do this again sometime. Not cool, man. Not cool. I don't know how Tyler found that house. It looked like it was waiting to be torn down. Stairs were ready to collapse. Don't go in there. I didn't know if he owned it or if he was squatting. No, you shouldn't go in there with him. You. That's me. That's toilet. <laughs> That's toilet. <laughs> I kind of like this guy. Uh. Oh my gosh. You're back at it. it. Looks terrible. <laughs> you look terrible. Can I be next? Okay. At night, Tyler and I were alone for a half a mile in every direction. That seems kind of nice. Hey man, what are you reading? Listen to this. 
There's a whole series of these. I am Jack's colon. Yeah, I get cancer, I kill Jack. <laughs> oh. oh gosh. Everything else in your life got the volume turned down. Yeah, because you're punching each other in the ear. If you fight anyone, who would you fight? Fight my boss, probably. Who would you fight? Fight my dad. I don't know my dad. He left when I was like six years old. I said, Dad, now what? He says, get a job. Same here. He says, I don't know. Get married. You can't get married. I'm a 30-year-old boy. We're a generation of men raised by women. I'm wondering if another woman is really the answer we need. Well, at least she didn't leave you. We were finding out more and more that we were not alone. Monday mornings, all I could do was think about next week. Can I get the icon in cornflower blue? <laughs> That's why. Oh, whoa, whoa, where are you going? Oh, these people are so shady. The first rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. <laughs> I've heard that. Someone yells stop, the fight is over. Only two guys to a fight. Fifth rule, one fight at a time, fellas. No shirts, no shoes. Fights will go on as long as they have to. If this is your first night at Fight Club, you have to fight. Who you were in Fight Club is not who you were in the rest of the world. If you fight any celebrity, who would you fight? Hemingway. You? Shatner. <laughs> Everywhere we went, we were sizing things up. Self-improvement is masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my gosh. The hysterical <sighs> shouting was in tongues. Oh my gosh. We all felt saved. How about next week? How about next month? <laughs> Next month. Yeah, oh. Sometimes Tyler spoke for me. Fell down some stairs. Fell down some stairs. Any historical figure. I fight Gandhi. <laughs> Good, man. Lincoln. Skinny guys fight to the burger. Uh, yeah. Them skinny guys. Where have you been the last eight weeks? <laughs> what are you doing? I haven't seen you at any support groups. You haven't been going to yours. Ah, uh, cheater. How do you know? I cheated. <laughs> I'm a new one. For men only. Like the testicle thing? What are you doing back there? I've been going to Debtors Anonymous. You want to see some really fucked up people? I took what was left of a bottle. Might have been too much. This is probably one of those cry for help things. Oh no. Do you want to wait and hear me describe that? Do you want to listen <laughs> and see if my spirit can use a phone? Yeah, you hang up on her. She said it's a cry for help. He's like, nope. Oh my gosh. Okay, I guess he went over there. Oh, I guess not. He probably should. I've been living here for two months and Tyler's door was never closed. Oh no. What was in that toilet? Do you see that? Leave this dream I had last night. I can hardly believe anything about last night. What, what are you doing here? This is my house. What are you doing in my house? Fuck you. Really though, too? that's kind of weird. You got some fucked up friends, I'm telling you. So he come in last night. Bones off the hook. Guess who's on the other end? Have you ever heard of death rattle before? Oh, gosh. <coughs> she needs help. <laughs> you, you don't even. Fast. You don't even know him. Did I call you? The mattress is all sealed in slippery plastic. Somebody call the cops. Oh, my gosh. This is crazy. <laughs> I fall asleep. I'm done for. You should take her to the hospital. He was obviously able to handle it. You're not into her, are you? God, not at all. She's a predator posing as a house pet. House pet? She invaded my support groups. Now she'd invaded my home. You shouldn't have hung up on her. Can't have you talking to her about me. Oh, geez. It's really quiet in the house, too. I could have moved to another room, but I didn't. Why not? Why are you going up there? Don't do that. Maybe he's going to join them. <laughs> I don't know if I want to see this. I would leave the house. Is that your blood? Yes. Some of it, yeah. Some of it. Smoke in here. Get yourself together. I am enlightened. You push people. You have to come home to this. <laughs> this is Detective Stern with the arson unit. We have some new information. Someone sprayed Freon into your front door lock. Dynamite? It means it was homemade. 
<gasps> Who would go and do such a thing? Have you recently made enemies with anyone? That was not just a bunch of stuff. It was me. Just tell him you fucking did it. Shh. That's what he wants to do. Oh, that sucks. I mean, you are friends with a lot of weirdos. Tyler and Marla were never in the same room. Condom is the glass slipper of our generation. Put one on when you meet a stranger, dance all night, then you throw it away. What? Uh, I understood that perfectly. I got this dress at a thrift store. It was worth every penny. It's very pretty, Marla. Someone loved it, then tossed it. Well, then it suits you. You can borrow it sometime. Oh, gosh. I do not like the vibe. Get rid of her. You guys are turds. I'm six years old again, <laughs> passing messages between parents. <laughs> that is really immature. Not that we don't love your little visit. You know, but... you are such a nutcase. I can't even begin. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Bye. They're all so weird. Say this about Marla. What she's trying to hit bottom. Sticking feathers up your butt does not make you a chicken. What? To make soap, first we render fat. Oh, this movie is a trip so far. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to keep up here like, these people are crazy. <laughs> what are you doing now? Shady stuff, always. The best fat for making soap comes from humans. What? Liposuction clinic. Richest, creamiest fat in the world. Ew. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, God. Oh, that's so freaking nasty. Yeah, I don't think that's entirely legal. Yeah, with enough soap, one could blow up just about anything. Can I see your hand, please? Useful information. This is chemical work. <gasps> Why? I tried not to think of the word serum or flesh. Find <laughs> my power. No! <coughs> this guy does not like you. We don't need him. If we don't agree! It's oh. only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. You did that to yourself? You need a new friend. This is not your friend. You're one step closer to hitting bottom. This rule of Fight Club is you don't talk about Fight Club? <laughs> oh no. Second rule of Fight Club. Is this yours? Pretend you're me. You find this. What would you do? I just throw it away. I don't know. Well, I gotta tell you, the person who wrote that is dangerous. <laughs> this might be someone you've known for years. Tyler's words coming out of my mouth. Maybe you just shouldn't bring me every little piece of trash you happen to pick up. <laughs> my tits gonna rot off. It's just gets to get weirder and weirder. How did you get this number? Annabur, Mrs. Raines, where are they? Tragically, they're dead. I got one for you. Thanks for the thought. I like her voice. It's very pretty, too. Feel anything? No. I wish I could return the favor. I could check your prostate. <laughs> it's a really weird way to flirt. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. See you. He's so mean to her, like, all the time. Both of them are so mean. She, she doesn't seem that bad. She seems more normal than you. Cornelius! Cornelius. It's me. Bob. Oh, hi, Bob. Oh. Hmm. Well, I got something so much better now. What is it? I'm not supposed to talk about it. And the third rule Bob, is... Bob, Bob. I'm a member. It's like the founder. Have you heard about the guy that invented this thing? He was born in a mental institution, and he sleeps only one hour a night. Oh. Do you know about Tyler Durden? Uh, I would say they both founded it, right? There's so many people there now. Someone's breaking the rule. <laughs> He's still fighting with that. I see a lot of new faces. It means a lot of you have been breaking the first two rules of Fight Club. Thank you. Yeah, where y'all coming from? An entire generation pumping gas, waiting tables, working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need. Mm -hmm. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great depression is our lives. That's depressing. We've all been raised on television to believe that one day we'd all be movie gods and rock stars, but we won't. We're very pissed off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Who are you? Oh my. There's a sign on the front that says Lou's Tap. I'm fucking Lou. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Look, stupid. Oh, you shouldn't. Oh, he's gonna join, apparently. I didn't quite catch that, Lou. <laughs> I really like this place. <laughs> You're gonna kill him! Guys, I'm Lou. 
You deserve that. Thanks, Lou. You don't just go beating people up unless they sign up for it. We'll see you next week. You should probably take some more time off. He is gnarly. He's gnarly! That would hurt. Ugh, I didn't want to think about it. You're gonna start a fight and you're gonna lose. <laughs> Watch out, jackass, come on! Not as easy as it sounds. Nice. Oh, it wouldn't be. People don't want to fight. <laughs> He's running. <laughs> oh. uh, we need to talk. You're up for a review. I am Jack's complete lack of surprise. You keep me on the payroll as an outside <laughs> consultant. My job will be never to tell people these things that I know. Crazy little shit. <laughs> oh. What the hell are you doing? For some reason, I thought of my first fight with Tyler. <laughs> he, he just is frozen there in shock. I, I don't blame him. Oh, oh no. Give me the paychecks and you won't ever see me again. This is how Tyler and I were able to have fight club every night of the week. Oh. Oh jeez, they're just, it's just chaos. What are we doing? Human sacrifice. Please tell me that's not a gun. It's a gun. It's just getting worse and worse. You're going to die. <laughs> What'd you study, Raymond? <laughs> Raymond, what did you want to be? Veneria, Veneria, too much school. Oh, he's so nice. Gonna check in on you. If you're not on your way to becoming a veterinarian in six weeks, you will be dead. <laughs> oh, he probably can't afford it. Too much school. Oh, jeez. Tomorrow will be the most beautiful day of Raymond Castle's life. You were the all singing, all dancing crap of the world. Oh, that's intense. You don't have to go. Oh, are you being nice, finally? What, what are you getting out of all this? Oh, none of your business. What do you get out of it? No, it's, it's not the same thing at all. You're not talking about me, are you? <sighs> oh, weirdo. Uh, Who did this? A person. This conversation. This conversation. Is over. I just can't win with you, can I? Oh, she wants to be your friend, you jerk. Why, why do we need bunk beds? <laughs> what now? Oh, no. Too young. Old, too old, fat, too fat. Oh. You're too young to train here. End of story. <laughs> He's just, just in the background. Just... Don't you look at me. I go inside and I'm gonna get a shovel. <laughs> a shovel? Two pair of black pants. Yes, sir. Two pair of black socks. Yes, sir. Three hundred dollars personal burial money. <laughs> oh hi. You're too old, fat man. Aww. Oh. Sometimes he's nice. Like, oh, he's back. You're too fucking blonde. <laughs> he's too blonde. Get him out of there. He's too blonde. This is one of many recent acts of vandalism. <laughs> Bob. What the fuck did you guys do? <laughs> the first rule of Project Mayhem is you do not ask questions, sir. This is only the beginning. I gotta take a piss. With prevention and enforcement. Uh, oh, what are y'all doing? I don't trust any of these guys. Oh no, there's more. Oh no. They're just ruining the city. It's just. Tormenting people. <laughs> he has to pee. Jerks. Could have waited until he was done. Man, these balls are ice cold. Why are you? Okay. You're gonna call up your rigorous investigation. State that there is no underground group, or these guys are gonna take your balls. We guard you while you sleep. Y'all are gonna get caught if you keep doing this. Jack's inflamed sense of rejection. I don't even know who to root for here. I don't like any one of these guys. Except for maybe Bob. Okay, that's good enough. Oh, no one's doing anything. Y'all, he's gonna kill him! Where'd you go, psycho boy? 
It felt like destroying something beautiful. Get him to a fucking hospital. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of sad. Airport parking, long term. <laughs> you could just tell. Recycle your animals. Why wasn't I told about Project Mayhem? Hey, Tyler! First rule of Project Shut Mayhem. Shut up! You need to forget about what you know. That's your problem. About friendship, and especially about you and me. You're driving! What are you doing? Being a jerk? Well, what do you wish you'd done before you die? Paint a self-portrait. Build a house. <laughs> oh. Why do you think I blew up your condo? <gasps> Oh, he did. He blew up his stuff. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna help anything, guys. Oh. <laughs> you little weasel. He just doesn't die. <laughs> it's such a crazy laugh. <laughs> and when you look down, you'll see tiny figures pounding corn. Hmm? Feel better, Jim. You just put me in a car accident. Feel better. Yeah, okay. Ah, oh, I like that house. I live there. And then Tyler. Tyler was gone. It's like a cult or something. <gasps> it's out of control, sir. Who are all these people? <laughs> you should not be here. They're weirdos. Paper Street Soap Company. What do you have? Can I come in? No, they're weird. Tyler went away. What happened? What happened? Destroy a piece of corporate art and trash a franchise coffee bar. <laughs> oh, y'all have gone too far. They shot Bob. Robert Paulson. He's a man and he's dead now because of us. I understand. Oh, what have you done to these people? In death. A member of Project Mayhem has a name. <laughs> His name is Robert Paulson. <laughs> His name is Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. <laughs> His name is Robert Paulson. I need to see you in my office in the morning. I'm looking for Tyler. I wish I could help you. <laughs> you were in here last Thursday. Who do you think I am? You're Mr. Durden. You're the one who gave me this. You love me, you hate me. Is that a pretty accurate description of our relationship, Tyler? <gasps> Say my name. Tyler Durden. Uh, okay. Oh. You fucking talk to her about me. <laughs> you were looking for a way to change your life. I'm free in all the ways that you are not. Tyler's gone. What? This is possible. Oh. <gasps> oh my gosh. You're just letting yourself become. Tyler Durden. I'm not listening to this. You are insane. No, you're insane. <laughs> Have I been Tyler longer and longer? Ah, uh, that'd be so scary. <laughs> yeah, with enough soap, we could blow up just about anything. Oh, he has no idea what he's done. They were burning the finger jumps and lie. The stink was unbelievable. Look, look. <laughs> Your life is in danger. What? <laughs> you have very serious emotional problems. Please get on the bus. Oh, I feel so bad for her. That must have just been the worst. This is a tightly regimented organization. I mean, that's good. He's turning himself in. You said if anyone <gasps> ever interferes with Project Mayhem, we gotta get his balls. Oh, hell no. Fucking out of your mind, your oh, mind. No. Oh, no. 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 Somebody time in this? Ah! First person comes out, this fucking door gets a, gets a lead salad. <laughs> Let's tell him. Oh, I'm glad he got away from that. No one deserves that. Now I, I'm seeing like he doesn't mean to be like that. Why do you do this all the time? Y'all need to stop doing this. Well, now I feel kind of bad for him. It's kind of sad. He doesn't mean to do all this. Oh, there's gonna be cameras everywhere. Damn it, since when is Project Mayhem about murder? Not killing anyone, man. We're setting him free. If you know, then I know. Ah, oh, yeah, that's a good point. What? Maybe I knew you'd know, so I spent the whole day thinking about the wrong ones. <laughs> oh, heavens no, not the green one. Heavens no! <laughs> he sucks. <laughs> like what this actually looks like? He's hitting himself. You are now buying a gun at your imaginary friend. You're four hundred thousand nights of lesser oh, He's still oh, in his underwear! <laughs> Oh, that would be so scary to see this! 
Oh, he just looks possessed. Oh, the, oh that's so creepy. <gasps> oh, oh, the music. Oh, I hate this. Oh, it's bone chilling. <laughs> oh, yeah. I still can't think of anything. <laughs> oh, flashback humor. It's your voice in my head. It's your voice in mine. I can't see my head. Mm -hmm. Where are you going with this Ikea boy? <laughs> Ikea boy? <laughs> I think you know. My eyes are open. Are you alright, sir? Uh-uh. Oh yeah, I'm okay. What kind of sick fucking game are you playing at? Putting me on a fucking... Oh my god. Who did this? I did, actually. Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> That made a very strange time in my life. That was interesting. That was a that was a whole trip. Okay, um, <laughs> so if you're new to my channel, what I'll usually do is I'll rewatch the movie a couple times and then I'll edit it and then I'll read about it, watch some documentaries, read some articles, and then I come back to you um, and do my outro. So that's what I'm gonna do. Wow. Okay, let's start off with a quick award ceremony. The best scene goes to... You don't know where I've been, Lou. Oh my god! <laughs> the best random character is a tie between... and... The creepiest sentence goes to... Shave yourself. Completely. Most blonde individual goes to... Angel face. Of course. Blonde! Voted most likely to succeed is... Raymond! Did I sound like him? Raymond! Let's see, most dramatic transition goes to Angel Face again. Get out of here, man, shit! He goes from Angel Face to Demon Face real quick. And the last award of the night, the esteemed ugliest screenshot goes to, surprisingly, Brad Pitt for this. <laughs> He's so ugly. <laughs> So this is the movie that made me go out and buy a TV. Okay, so five times, five times a Brad Pitt flashed across my screen and I didn't see it. Yeah, so I bought a TV because I was using my laptop, very small screen. Anyway, we're done with this story. I like that the movie jumps right into this super intense scene and then we're just like, how did we get here? Like, what happened to get us to this point? And then by the time I was brought back to the opening scene, I had totally forgotten about it. Okay, where do I begin? This movie was something else. Interesting writing, phenomenal acting, and just super creative editing. I feel like it could have been a super depressing movie, but the comedic timing, the unique humor saved that from happening, at least for me. But then again, I think Fargo is the most hilarious movie and show ever, so maybe I just have a twisted sense of humor? I'm not sure. I'm betting you do too if you like this movie. There's just never a dull moment in Fight Club, and every scene drives the story forward. Okay, so let's talk about the characters. Tyler Durden, played by Brad Brad Pitt. He is intelligent, charismatic, passionate, extreme, and because he is right in so many ways, people around him develop this blind spot towards all the ways in which he is so, so wrong. He's just so intense and, you know, you look up to him, especially all the guys out there who didn't have much direction for their lives. I, I can see that happening in real life. It does happen in real life. He's just got a very strong personality, very, very uh, aggressive personality. So a couple of things, Brad Pitt actually got his real teeth chiseled off the front ones, just little pieces of it for the movie. And then he had him fixed after the movie, but that is, that is commitment. He and uh, Edward Norton also took soap making classes. I, I didn't know that was a thing, soap making classes. I feel like that would be really boring. That takes dedication right there. There's a lot of truth in what Tyler says. Like I find myself nodding, you know, to him a few times. He's kind of like a cult leader. Speaking of cult leaders, Angel Face. I don't want to talk about Angel Face. He's played by Jared Leto, who I famously don't like because he's a weirdo. I'll tell you why I dislike Jared Leto in another video. Yeah. 
I have very good reasons, okay? And then we got our unnamed narrator, or um, Jack, or the other Tyler. Uh, he's never given a name, and he's, he's kind of mysterious. Like, I'll call him Jack through the video, that's who I'm talking about, but yeah, he, he doesn't have a name. I realized that later. Um, but yeah, he's played by Edward Norton, who is obviously in his own league in terms of acting. He's incredible. I know I'm talking about the actor, but it's just, uh, Edward Norton is so interesting. He's super private in real life. He has no interest in being famous, like a celebrity or something. He's known as being difficult to work with. I even heard about that rumor and I, I never really saw anything with Edward Norton in it. Uh, back to the character he plays. I feel like as the narrator becomes visibly more physically damaged and injured, I mean, he's got, he's just broken. Um, Tyler ends up doing the exact opposite. Tyler is always high energy, whether he's, you know, boxing or doing martial arts in in the background having adult time with marla or downstairs lumberjacking or um you know when he's like you're not talking about me are you <laughs> i was like mind your own business he's so annoying sometimes before i realized it's the same person i was like oh this guy i don't i, I really don't like him like he's hilarious but as a person i don't like tyler He's, oh, he's bad news. I can sniff that from a mile away. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I really do like the narrator. He, he's, he's just, he's kind of quirky, you know? He's kind of weird. He's different. You can tell he's just bored with his life. Um, yeah, really, really interesting character. Oh, by the way, if you didn't know this, um, the director, David Fincher, actually told Edward Norton to literally punch Brad Pitt. <laughs> which is why he got him in the ear like that was real and you know how I feel about forced method acting I think that's 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 terrible Brad Pitt can act let him act don't actually punch him in the ear certainly not in the ear rude and then we got Marla Singer um I cannot say this actress's name Helena Bonham Carter Boneham I, I say it wrong, okay. We'll call her Helena, okay? Um, she is an amazing actress. Uh, she, she's just a naturally funny person. In my opinion, this performance was something else. Every time she's on the screen, my eyes are just glued to her. She's, she's just so interesting, and I think a lot of that has to do with the actress, but the character too. Like, Marla is a mess, um, but you can tell she's she's hurt by Jack's standoffishness. She cares about him genuinely. Um, she twice asks, you know, who did this to you? Uh, which is a sign that she really does truly care. She's concerned about his well-being, even though, you know, she's not maybe all there or whatever you want to call it. She's, she's, you know, she's suffering from a few things. She's probably pretty depressed, I would imagine, based on her actions. I don't know. She's like, it's a cry for help. Yeah. Oh, yes, it was. And I don't know what Tyler was talking about. She definitely doesn't look like a house pet. Maybe like a stray cat. Mm -hmm. I feel like Helena embodies the character perfectly. She wasn't like the first option. Um, they tried for Reese Witherspoon, Courtney Love, and I have a bad memory. Winona Ryder. Which honestly would be fine too. I love Winona Ryder, but yeah, um, I think it was just so, it was so perfect. That's Marla. You know, that's perfect. She's perfect. She's Marla. She's not perfect. She's kind of terrible, really, but she's just hilarious. Um, and you know, it's funny. She kind of ended up being the normal one in the movie. Marla Singer is the normal one. Yikes. And I don't know, the narrator's boss also seemed pretty normal. I don't know about you, but I found him absolutely delightful. Like he's never actually unreasonable. And when he's like, can I get the icon in cornflower blue? <sighs> oh, oh, he's so sweet. I, 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 I like him. But still, I loved the beating up scene. Oh God, no face, no. Like the, the boss's face the whole time. 
is so freaking hilarious. I think he was treated very poorly, and I have had way worse managers than that. Okay, Jack, or narrator, quit complaining. It gets worse. It gets so much worse than that guy. He's pretty nice. Can I get the icon in cornflower blue? Okay, and then of course the obvious. The twist. The twist. It was very well done. It was thought out and perfectly executed, in my opinion. Um, a lot of times when you get a big twist like that, there's a lot of explanations that have to be done, um, but this one was super smooth. You're not left with all these questions, you know, all these... Um, holes, plot holes, attention to detail to a rare degree. Watching it for a second time though, I couldn't believe how obvious it was. <laughs> for some reason I thought of my first fight with Tyler. Like how did I not catch that? Tyler and Marla were never in the same room. Get a job. Same here. Like, it's just hiding in plain sight and then you watch it again and you're like, oh shoot, I missed that too. <laughs> It actually makes it really fun to rewatch because it's not boring. It's not like you've seen it, you solve the mystery, it's over. I know who did it or whatever. It's it's very interesting to see all these little details that they put in. The importance of material possessions. Son, this is serious. Yes, I know it's serious. Oh yeah, and sorry I was kind of boring with the twist. Like when it came up, um, I was just kind of um, processing it i guess i didn't have this like <gasps> moment because like i just get really quiet when i'm really in the zone i was watching it you know yeah i'm making a video so i should have probably voiced my thoughts or whatever but sometimes when something's really good i just want to be quiet i just want to watch it so yeah uh being a movie from 1999 i can imagine that this ending was really unique um maybe not unprecedented but like really cool and unexpected now you see things I feel like you couldn't pull that off nowadays and have someone watch it and be completely shocked at the twist with so many shows and movies doing it you kind of come to expect it and it's not very impressive anymore because it's been done so as you probably know this movie was based on a novel by Chuck Palahniuk um it's, it's funny i actually knew of his work i never read fight club but those of you who read him will find this funny i once upon a time read a book called snuff okay uh i was a super innocent teenager and uh i'll just tell you it was shocking shocking reading that book but the writing is so interesting and it's so captivating that I just kept reading it even though I'm, I'm, I'm disgusted. Fight Club's probably gross too. I haven't read it yet. So I guess Chuck Palahniuk's inspiration for Fight Club came from real life experiences. I guess one night he was camping and the people next to him in the next tent um, were being super loud and he went up to him and was like, hey, hey quiet down or whatever and they beat him up really bad and because his face was messed up people just didn't ask him about it they didn't ask like what happened he says um he thinks they were afraid to find out that's very interesting you know it's kind of like that one scene um where they have to go out and lose a fight um he says uh you know people go way out of their way to avoid uh, uh, physical altercations. But yeah, Chuck Palahniuk says, uh, people don't want to know the bad things about you. And that's kind of what sparked this, um, this book. So I don't believe this movie has just one theme. Um, a lot of themes can be drawn. Um, the first one's obvious, consumerism is bad. You know, just in time for after Black Friday, um, if you don't live in America, it's where Everyone goes out and buys a bunch of stuff. I don't know, because there's sales. Did you buy stuff? I bought stuff. I bought a lot of stuff. <laughs> All on credit. Another theme might be um, because Gen X and young boomers are the first ones to uh, grow up with television. Um, I read an article from 1964 that says 93% of American families reported to own a TV set. That's 1964. So it was super normalized 
by then. Advertising made a huge impact on society. Just all this widespread materialism. Uh, the more you buy, the more complete you'll become. Uh, even the narrator struggles with that. He had all these nice clothes, he had all this nice furniture, he was so close to being... What? <laughs> Finished? Done? Happy? Successful? I don't know. Or maybe it's about turning 30 years old or 40 years old. You know, um, when you're not quite middle-aged or you're far from middle-aged, you still feel and act really young, but you're expected to be finished growing. Uh, you're expected to have your own family. You know, he says, I can't have kids or whatever. I'm a 30-year-old boy. <laughs> You know, I really, I really relate to that um, a lot. I, you know, I'm supposed to be mature, but I still laugh at fart jokes because they're funny. I think anyone who doesn't laugh at fart jokes, they're faking it. Many people connect the story with societal changes in what masculinity should be or should look like, what it is uh, or what it's become. Um, it could be about, because it's an, an American movie, it could be about the American dream um, being obsolete or unachievable or broken or just a bunch of BS. I feel like there's never a, a singular meaning to any story. It is whatever you make it. Like, I might see this story differently than you. I don't like it when people are like, there's one theme or there's one moral. There's one, one, one. No, there's never just one. I don't want to think like that, you know, even if, you know, the author's intention is, you know, consumerism is bad. <laughs> we'll go back to that, for instance. I, I, I don't think there's just one thing. It's a very complex story. It's, it's got twists and turns. It's, it's all over the place. It's very intelligently written. I'm pretty sure there's more than one theme, right? Let's see, another theme could be uh, mental illness. I don't know, in my notes I just put mental illness. <laughs> I personally relate to, we've all been raised on television to believe we'd all be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars. But we won't. We're slowly learning that fact. We're very, very pissed so off. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and there's just there's just countless others. How do how do you interpret this movie? What's your take? Tell me in the comments because I like them and I read them. Okay, let's move on to real life. Of course, such uh, an interesting and intense and provoking movie is going to be controversial. One issue that people had when this movie came out was the fear of imitation, much like a couple movies we've watched in the past, like Child's Play, The Exorcist. You know, people, people are scared that real fight clubs are gonna start emerging out of nowhere. And they're, they're not entirely wrong to fear that. Um, in the early 2000s, it did end up happening a few times. Real, actual, real life fight clubs, mostly by young people, like teenagers young. Like, <laughs> And I don't really blame them because it's a club. Everyone wants to belong, uh, especially at that age, you want to belong to something. And that that's such a cool thing to belong to, I guess, especially as a teenager. But people were afraid of that, not to mention there's the whole underlying theme that can be drawn of uh, nihilism. You know, people are afraid of nihilism. You know, sit next to someone and tell them, this is pointless. Nothing matters. They hate it. They hate it so much. It scares them. <laughs> I don't really think that way, but <laughs> what was that? Okay, so the director, David Fincher, actually started out as a music video director, but then he moved on to movies because he's apparently super duper good at it. He has a ton of famous movies. So he did Alien 3, 7, I guess. I haven't seen most of these. Panic Room, Zodiac, The Game. I think I actually watched that before. Um, the Curious Case of Benjamin Button, The Social Network, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Gone Girl. So yeah, he's, he's, he's good. 
Let's see what else. Uh, the fourth wall is broken quite a few times. You know, there's the whole joke that Tyler makes about flashback humor. Um, he's almost talking to us, the audience, who's just watched a two-hour long movie about him. <laughs> Even though it's only been a couple seconds in, in, in his world, flashback humors. That's, that's funny. I could be wrong, but I swear there's a few times where Tyler and the narrator are speaking to us directly. They're, t they're talking to the camera. It feels very personal. And the fourth wall is being, it's just crumbling. And of course, there's the uh, subliminal Brad Pitts that I somehow managed to embarrassingly uh, miss. I'm getting a TV. I'm getting like an actual TV. I was watching it on this tiny, teeny, tiny laptop and um, it's very small. But I'm gonna get an actual TV, a big, a big kid TV. Okay, okay. So I can actually see things. I can't tell you how many things I've missed <laughs> because it's a small screen. Okay, so there's so much more to talk about, um, but I'll just leave you with my last couple musings. Um, one of them is when Bob, oh, Bob, he's great. I know who Meatloaf is, was. Rest in peace, Meatloaf. Um, I, I know who Meatloaf is now. Was Marla real? I can't be sure because she seems just as fake as the other Tyler is, right? Like, is she actually real? She might be a figment of his imagination too. She might not actually be there, especially at the end, they're watching everything crumble and all that. I just can't be sure what's real in the end. I like to think of it like everything is real except for Tyler Durden. Uh, that's my take on it. That's the one that I like the most. That's very satisfying. It's not necessarily realistic but oh gosh does it make for a good movie just a really good movie it deserves to be on the list of greatest movies it deserves to be a recommendation by y'all thank you for that i appreciate it um i just broke the rules i just talked about fight club so much Anyway, uh, I had fun, hope you had fun, and I'll see you next time. Bye!